Welcome. My name is Deborah Garcia, and I'm the coordinator at the LAC Career and Job Services Center. This event is a joint collaboration between my department and the library. We are delighted to have you here today for our career information panel on career options with the library technician certificate. I want to remind you to pick up an event brochure at the sign-in table and to please fill out the evaluation form before you leave us today. We also have refreshments available for your enjoyment at the table to your left. Thank you for coming today, and I now present to you Kim Barclay. Thank you, Deborah. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kim Barclay, and welcome to the library department in the LAC Career and Job Services Center. Uh, we are delighted to have you here today for our career information panel on the library technician profession. Our goal is to provide you with important information that will assist you in deciding on a challenging career path. We are living a technology revolution. The duty of library technician and assistant are expanding and evolving as library increasingly use the internet and other technology to share information. They are increasingly responsible for daily library operation. Depending on where they work, these workers can have other titles such as library technical assistant, media aid, library media assistant, or circulation assistant. We have seven career professionals scheduled to speak today for our event. They bring a total of almost 100 years of combined library experience to share their expertise with you today. Please hold your welcoming applause until I have introduced all of our guest speakers. I thank each and every one of our guest speakers for participating in our event and sharing their experience from the field. Without them, this career panel would not be possible. Our third panelist is Ruben Amador. Ruben has worked at Long Beach City College for over 14 years. He has been in the library field for over 18 years. Ruben's main interest and in family are his daughter, sport, music, food, and travel. He plays soccer every Sunday. Ruben likes just about every music genre and loves listening to music, especially when working out. As a family, they also like to explore new places and find restaurants where they can dine and treat themselves to a good meal. Last year, he had the opportunity to travel to Spain for a week. A few years back, he was fortunate to travel to Germany for the FIFA Soccer World Cup. And next June, he will travel to South Africa for the following FIFA Soccer World Cup again. What a lucky guy. Ruben has a master's degree in library and information science from San Jose State University a Leadership Development Institute certificate from UCLA, and a bachelor degree in public administration, management, policy making from Cal State Dominguez Hill. Our second panelist is Dr. Ram Chandran Seturaman. Set is the PCC librarian and the outreach liaison to the PCC campus. Dr. Ram Chandran Sitraman is also an academic senate member representing the library and giving voice to library issues before the academic senate. Dr. Sitraman is originally from India, bringing a multicultural note to the library. Dr. Sitraman holds a PhD in English literature from the University of Florida, a master's degree in library science from the University of Illinois, and Commonwealth Literature from the University of New Brunswick, Canada, and a bachelor degree in English Literature from the Banaras Hindu University. Our third panelist is Nenita Buena Ventura. Nenita is the Access Services and Electronic Resource Librarian who manages, plan, coordinate, and evaluates 
the daily operation of units within the access service of Long Beach City College Library, including circulation, periodical, interlibrary, course reserve, stack maintenance, CD ROM, and electronic online resource. Over the last 10 years, NANITA has worked tirelessly to find subscription of online database for the library at affordable price. Nita is an instructor in the library technician program, creating and teaching library 202 introduction to access services, one of the core course of the program. Nita is originally from the Philippines and brought a touch of her home country to the library. Nita holds a master's degree in library and information science from San Jose State University, a master's degree in educational technology from the University of the Philippines, Quezon City, and a master's degree in library science and bachelor's degree in library science and mathematics, both from the National Teacher College in Manila, the Philippines. Our four panelists is Dali Uku, Dali is the library department chair and also the bibliographic access librarian. She is responsible for cataloging the library collection and giving, giving easy access to every item in the library. It means creating order where there was chaos. Delhi is an instructor in the library technician program, creating and teaching library 201 introduction to cataloging, one of the core courses of the program. Delhi is originally from Nigeria. She is also a designer using African fabrics and prints in designing ornaments and clothes. They represent diversity and are a blend of multi multicultural sentiment. Delhi holds a master's degree in library and information science from UCLA, a master's degree in mass communication from Miami University at Oxford, and a bachelor's degree in linguistic from the University of Cincinnati. Our fifth panelist is Shamika Simpson. Shamika has a BA in English from CSU Fresno and is currently enrolled in San Jose State University Master of Library Information Science program. Shamika has worked in various libraries since 2002, which includes County of Los Angeles Public Library, Fireball High School in Linwood, University School District K-12, and Long Beach City College Library academic library at LBCC library. Her current responsibilities include cataloging non-print and print material, processing media requests, bibliographic maintenance, and bibliographic cleanups. Our sixth panelist is Dina Laney. Dina joined the LBCC library as a system librarian in 2007. Dina is responsible for updating the library website with new technology and has brought many interactive features such as library blog and online tutorials. Dina is an instructor in the library technician program, creating and teaching Library 204 Introduction to Reference Services, one of the core course of the program. Dina holds a master's degree in library and information science from Florida State University and a bachelor's degree in graphic design from Florida Atlantic University. Our last panelist is Kim Barclay, myself. Kim is the bibliographic instruction librarian who oversees the library technician program and instruction program at LBCC Library. A king believes that the librarian must be a lifelong learner before he or she can be a lifelong instructor. King is originally from Vietnam. However, she has worked and studied and lived abroad for some 20 years and has acquired a deep understanding and empathy for the various cultures and customs of the world. King holds a master's degree in library and information science from Cal State San Jose and a bachelor's degree in art and art history from the University of Sorbonne, Paris, France, and a diploma of the first cycle from the Ecole de Nou, Paris, France, and a certificato de Rastro from the Università Internazionale dell'Arte, France, Italy. The 
please join me in welcoming all our panel panelists today. And without further ado, Mr. Ruben Amador. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, first and foremost, thank you for being here, spending some time with us. I know you guys have a really busy schedule, so again, I want to thank you for, you, thank you for taking the time to come over here and listen to what we have to say about our experiences working in the library as well as what a library certificate can mean to you as a career. Um, as you probably read in my bio, I've been in the library business, or library field, for nearly 19 years. I started freshly out of high school. I started working at my local public library in the city of Paramount. Um, you know where Paramount is? Not too far from us here. Paramount Library, it's a part of a, the LA County public library system. And I had the experience of working with a lot of um, good professionals at the time who inspired me to stay in the field and to grow into the field the way that I am now. I worked with them for nearly seven years. Uh, on a part-time basis. Even after I got my first full-time job at the UCLA Medical Library as a library technician, I stayed with the county part-time because I never really wanted to lose the experience of working in the public library field. Okay, a lot of people ask me and look at me funny when I tell them that I work in the library. First they tell me, oh, that must be really boring. You're probably the guy behind a desk that just tells everybody to be quiet. And you know what, and I, I usually just smile at them and let them know, you know what, the library field has changed so much. Ever since the internet and all the information uh, revolution came into place, the library has emerged in many ways with all this information technology. And that's what I do here now at Long Beach City College. My main job is it's the library systems technician. What do I do? When you go in the library, you see all those computers in the labs and everything. Uh, the databases that you access. I'm pretty much in charge of making sure that all those computers are ready and accessible for you to use. Uh, if something breaks down, it is my duty to go and fix, to make, evaluate if we need a new machine, or basically, if I can help you, or walk you through the databases, I can help you do that too. But there's a lot of stuff that you can do in the library field. I mean, uh, from cataloging, and I'm sure you'll hear from a, our expert cataloger later on here, our circulation department, and I've always encouraged people who feel that they're strong in, with public relations to follow into this field, especially in the circulation area. You're dealing with students every single day. And again, if you, if you ever have a chance to work at the public library, I think that should be like your place where you get your feet wet because you will, get a little, you will experience a little bit of everything. Not to say that the academic library is not as interesting as a public library, but I think it's, it'll be more of an enhancing uh, experience for you to move on to a larger academic or even a special library. Uh, I can tell you many stories of what happened to me throughout the years, but I do have to say that probably the best one has been that I've been blessed with, work, you know, with working with real professionals who again inspired me to just fall into the field. Okay, to, uh, I want to say back in 2003, I was finally encouraged by my supervisors here to, you know, to, to enroll in the master's programs in the library science. I really felt at the time it wasn't the right field for me. I really wanted to get into business. But I, looking back at all the history that I had working in the library field, I, really, I just felt that I, I was right into place. And I just fell into it. I love it. I'm still there. I don't see myself working anywhere else, to be honest with you. I completed my degree last May, and now I'm also working as an adjunct librarian. I'm getting some hours at, here at LAC and PCC. And I got to tell you, it's, a, it's the most rewarding job that I can have. The fact that I can sit behind a desk and not show you, <laughs> but the fact that I can actually look at you and say, how can I help you and help you find your resources and anything that can help you achieve your academic goals. Okay. That's pretty much my experience. <laughs> Our second panelist is Dr. Ramchandran Seturaman. Thank you, Kim. And once again, to follow what uh, Ruben said, welcome to all of you. Um, my experience in the library field is far less than Ruben's because my passion is teaching, and I was teaching for a long time. 
English literature in different universities in America. And if I had known that the library field will have such beautiful women around me like this, I would have come to this field a long time earlier. Um, I also fell into the same trap of thinking that when you talk about librarians, they wear glasses and then um, they, they have no dynamic quality about them. And when I went to do my master's in Canada, believe me or not, uh, I've done a number of years of teaching in India, but my experience with library was no different from many of the students out here. And uh, um, never experienced the cold, came from a tropics, and then I would wear two pairs of gloves, and then in those days they had the cat catalog, and then I'll go all the way to the back and, and those book, uh, those cat catalogs were so tall that I had to be on my toe to get to it. And then it'll slip and I'll start all over again. I said, to hell with this. And then I went to the librarian and I said, hey, do you have that book which is green in color? It's got some stripes on it. It said, she looks at me, what is the title? And I had no clue. So that's the kind of a background I came from. So um, things changed when I did my PhD in Florida and that's when I used the library quite extensively and found out that um, you're only as good a student as the resources that you use. And uh, it was an eye-opener for me. Better late than regret later. So, um, and, and also while I was doing um, my PhD, um, I got married to a beautiful woman in the library. And, uh, after teaching for a while, I thought the best way that I could communicate with my wife and have a meaningful dialogue is to be in the same field. And it helped a lot. <laughs> and our conversations are, are healthier now. We talk about it, although we don't talk shop all the time at home, but it's made a big difference. She works now at Cal State Long Beach. She's a librarian, engineering librarian, and we have fun together. Um, in terms of my own profession, what I do at PCC, um, it's, an, it's slightly different from many of the librarians at LAC because it's a smaller library. And one of the things, that the, the little piece of wisdom that I can pass on to you is that if you work in a small library, you have to be a jack of all trades. And uh, so anything can happen. The, the copier machine can break down and uh, um, you would be asked to work in the circulation one minute and the next minute um, you have to work at the research center. And so if you're able to pick up your skills in all the different aspects and, and never assume that even though you're a library technician that there is one narrow field where you need to specialize, that is going to go a long way for you and stand you in good stead. Okay, that's about it for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sitaraman. Our fourth panelist is Nenita Buenaventura. Hi, um, welcome to the library field, and uh, we're happy to have you here in, the, in this uh, career day. Um, just like to inform you that uh, I'm uh, one of the area supervisor in the Long Beach City College Library, which is uh, a while ago that men uh, Kim Barkland mentioned that I'm the area supervisor for the circulation, periodicals, interlibrary loan, and also responsible for the acquisition for the online databases. I've been in the library field for 34 years. I worked first at the, uh, in the Philippines. You know, I become a librarian. And then um, at first, before, I don't want to be a librarian, you know. I want to be a nurse. But then when my, my brother got an accident and I saw blood, said, no, I cannot handle to be a nurse. <laughs> so I changed my field and become a librarian. And then my first experience as a librarian is my first class is about cataloging. And during that time, you know, in the Philippines, because we are a third country, we don't have computerized. So you have to go in line and carrying about 10 books with you. And then, you know, and let have all those uh, index cards with you that you type all how to catalog books. And then, I just got panicked because my instructor is very, very strict. You know, if they, she found that the way you indent the card, typing the index card, she will throw the books and yell at you. 
And I first said, is this the, the, the profession that I have to go to? I got so scared, but then I said, okay, I, it seems like I really love it because most of my instructor right over there in the Philippines is very, very nice. And you know, we have also American books uh, that we are using and I fell in love with it. And then so I decided to pursue my, li my librarian career. I came here in 1984 in Hawaii because my paper, uh, my sister petitioned me. And then I worked for about a year doing, managing the business in Hawaii. But then I said, this is not the profession I have. I'm not, I'm not a business woman. And I really, you know, um, miss my job as a librarian. So during the time, the, the employment in Hawaii is very, very high, so I cannot land the job. But I decided, you know, to uh, uh, volunteer in an elementary school library, which is I'm, because I'm a puppeteer also in the Philippines. So I'm doing, you know, the uh, giving storytelling in the kids, doing the puppets. So that's my first experience, and that's how I found that I really like to be a librarian, working really in the library. So from there, uh, my cousin, who is here in California, invited me to come over here. So I came over here in 1980, part of, uh, late of 1985. And then I start also uh, applying for a job. But since, you know, that's the how I found out that I cannot land a job because my uh, master's degree in the Philippines is not an American Library Association accredited. And that's how I started my thing. So what I did is I went to Palomar College and uh, start to enroll in the library certificate program, library technician program. My first day is uh, introducing yourself like the one you're doing. You have, like you're, you're doing your distance learning. You have to do your, you know, your, introduce yourself. My instructor, the director, Dan Arshan, when I introduce myself, tell me, I don't need you here in my class. Said, you have your master's degree, and I don't think so that this is your, your, your position to be a student again. So she, he encouraged me, he landed me, said, I have a position in the library and I'm opening it to you. You could start, you know, working with us. And she, he offering me to have to be an assistant librarian, but I turned it down. I said, I don't want to be, what other positions that you are offering? And she said that I have a library clerk and I told him, I want to be start as a library clerk. And he's just look at me and ask me why. And I said, you know, if I'm new in America, and I said, and so I want to see how the American libraries work. So from, from library clerk, I start from library clerk, and then after six months, and she said, you are really doing a wonderful job, and you are doing so. I got to become a library assistant, and then become head of microfilm and interlibrary loan in Palomar College. And from there, from, I worked with them for almost three years, and then I transferred to Cal State University of San Marcos. So I have about experience both in academic libraries and also experience in the public library because from there I worked, because since I want to see really the overall what is American libraries, I decided also to um, work in other libraries like public libraries because I'd like to see how, how they are working. So I just like to let you know that my heart, be, because I'm start working as a library clerk, going to become assistant librarian and become librarian. So I know how the paraprofessional feel, okay? So I just like to let you know about all those, all those positions and where I'm having right now is really, really to like to let you know that it's really a good job for you to have it, especially if you love, you know, to do a public service, helping people to do a research and everything. Okay, so that's the Thank you, Nenita. Our four panelists is Deli Oku. Deli. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. My name is Deli Oku, and I'm originally from Nigeria. And I became a librarian, and most importantly, a cataloger by default. I never thought I would ever be a cataloger. I never thought I would ever be a librarian. That is like God tricked me into becoming a librarian <laughs> and a cataloger, and I will tell you why. I was thinking about this all along, and I said, you know, I have evidence to prove this, okay? I came to this country as an international student and looking for a job on campus, and one of the ladies uh, that I met retiring, and she said, Delhi, I'm retiring. I can talk to my boss 
and you can start take my place and work as a student. Like I said, okay. So I started working as a student in the library, shelving books, and working in the circulation area, doing a lot of other tasks. To make a long story short, I worked there until I graduated from University of Cincinnati. I said, okay, I'm done with libraries. No, I'm not. Got to my graduate school in Ohio. One of the jobs that I got, apart from research assistant, was also opening to work, if you have uh, experience working in the library to manage the periodicals uh, area. I had the experience, so here I am again in the library. It's like every time I try to run away from this area, something drags me back into it. Upon graduation, I came to California and started working at uh, the city of Torrance. And then there was an ad in the newspapers. Loyola Marymount University was having a job fair. They wanted everybody to come in all areas of the library. I went to the job fair, I had to fill out an application form, and one of the requirements there was, how many words can you type per minute? I said, well, I can type like 20 words or 15 words per minute. And to be in cataloging, you have to know how to at least type, because you'll be searching computers and everything, OK? And of all the people to pick me, believe it or not, was a cataloging librarian. <laughs> I've never had a cataloging background. When I was, you know, when I left Loyola, I went in one and said, I have a very simple question for you. Why did you select me for this position? And she said, because the first day I saw you, I knew you were, you would pay attention to details, and I know you are very organized, and I know you'll be very good in this field. I said, okay, thank you for the answer. <laughs> okay. But uh, being in this position as a, as a library assistant, I was able to promote also in the field, and a new librarian came aboard. She, was a, she has a very vast background in technical services in the library and works at Caltech currently. And she sat, me, sat down with me and she said, Deli, do you know how to use the computer here to enter all these books or to look up information in this, uh, for the books? And I said, no, I don't, and I really don't want to. And she said, oh, come on, you can do it. I said, okay. I learned how to do, look up books, and before you know it, I was cataloging like 100 books a day. <laughs> <laughs> and they liked me then. I said, okay. And then she said, you know, you already have your master's degree already. Why are you working as a library assistant? Why don't you go to school, get your master's degree so that you can, you know, become a librarian and then you can come to our meetings and I said, how can I do that? I have a full-time job. I don't want to lose my job. Fortunately for me, uh, we had just hired a new department head for that area. And I said, okay, I applied to UCLA and was accepted. And I went to talk to her and I said, I just got admitted to UCLA. And I'm working full time. I don't want to lose my job. And she said, you know what, Delhi? I went to school full time and I worked full time. I said, okay. So I decided to do the same thing. I went to school full time and I worked full time. Nobody knew that at UCLA because they told me you cannot do that. But eventually I graduated and of the 95 of us that graduated from UCLA that year, only five of us went into cataloging. Okay? That brought me, breaks me down to cataloging. So it's like people actually led me in that direction. And cataloging, they say, is the hardest area in the library. I don't think so. It's just that it has numbers, a lot of numbers, and a lot of words. And if you know anything about me, I can do one plus one, but once you say one plus n or one plus a, that's it, that you've lost me, okay? <laughs> but when it comes to cataloging, for some strange reason, it's like a second nature to me. You just have to figure out how things work, and once you figure that out, it's like always taking something apart and trying to fix it. What we do basically is we try as much as possible to help, we think of the end user, the students who look at the online catalog, how can you find what I'm putting into the system, database now. What I put into the online catalog, how can you as a student come in and look it up and find it? And that's what we basically do. I know I asked Shamika to define cataloging for me, find the definition, and she came in and I said, Delhi. And she read, has a definition all mapped out, and I said, okay, I'm supposed to understand that, right? And she said, <laughs> no, I know, it's, you're making it complicated, and you're gonna scare everybody here away that wants to be a cataloger. So cataloging is very, very interesting. It's, you get to deal with a lot of formats. With books, you get to deal with digital. Now we're dealing with the online, the digitized world. You get to catalog comic books. You get to catalog 
kids, you get to catalog everything. And I tell my students, think of cataloging one way. You've already done cataloging all your life without even knowing it. When you go to your house, I want you to start at your house. Open up your kitchen cabinets, you organize things one way. You don't put your plates with your spices, probably. You, put your, you have your spices, and then you have your plates, and you have your cups, and you have things organized in one way. You don't put your clothes in the kitchen or wherever, you know. That's, you organize things. That's cataloging. You've already started there, okay? So don't be intimidated by cataloging when you hear it. And I hope you all take cataloging class, and you will probably yell at me the first three, four weeks, but that's okay. <laughs> Once you get to meet me and work with me, you will probably know, oh, okay, there's a logic to this madness. Okay? So that's all I have to say now. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Delhi. Our fifth panelist is Shamika Simpson. Shamika. Hi. Um, my story, I guess, is kind of similar to the other panelists here. I started off in the library by accident. Um, I lived in Fresno for about 10 years and I moved back because my husband decided he wanted to go into the Air Force. So that left me with two, um, one child and pregnant and I was kind of bored at home. So my local library was hiring. And I started off at the county library at the circulation desk and from there I ended up at um, a high school library. I ended up at an elementary school library and now I'm here. Um, of all the libraries, I do love working at Long Beach City College the best just because I do more cataloging, so I'm more, it's more intricate, more detailed of the things that I do here. But the most memorable place, I would say, was the high school library. Um, I got to do cataloging there as well, but it was a lot more fun, a lot more intense because of the high school students in and out all day. So I kind of got the public aspect and then the back office cataloging as aspect all in once. But, and to this day, I still keep in contact with all my students. Um, here, basically, um, to figure out, are you a cataloger? Basically, catalogers are very detailed, we're organized, we're meticulous. Um, we have to be able to connect the dots of information, even in a world of chaos and then when things are out of order. We have to be able to research information and find information just so that when we get all the information and we break it down so that you, the student or the library user, can look into our online catalog and find the information by subject, title, author, whichever, you know, whichever method you use. Um, basically, like Deli said, she was talking about my cataloging description here, so I won't even go into it. <laughs> but in order to prepare me for cataloging, once I decided that the library was the field I wanted to stay in, um, and once I was encouraged by my previous boss at the high school to get into the master's degree program for library information science, um, I had to begin preparation. So basically the courses I took in order to make myself a better cataloger, to make myself just a better library staff person in general, I took um, beginning cataloging, advanced cataloging, I did take records management, I've taken research courses, um, I've also taken interpersonal skills, um, collection management, these things just to help me understand the breakdown of the library and to help me understand all the information of the library. Um, and basically, as a cataloger though, one of the main things that will help you in your field is to stay fresh, to stay abreast of all the new current trends and information. Like Ruben mentioned before, there's so many emerging new trends with technology and all these different things. So now that we have all these internet resources and continuing resources, we have to be able to catalog them to make them understandable and easily understandable and used by you as well. And um, basically, I just I've joined um, a couple groups: um, the Southern Technical Processes Group. I'm a member of you know the California Library Association. So I just stay abreast with workshops. Um, I look at all the listservs at the library blogs. And I just try to stay fresh on all the information because believe it or not, even though as catalogers we abide by a set rule, a set guideline, some set standards, these rules, standards, guidelines do evolve and they do change with the current trends. And so you have to, you know, keep up on the updates, keep up on stuff. Sometimes I find stuff, I'm like, Deli, did you know this? Hey, they got rid of this field and they added this, you know, so I get really excited about little minute stuff like that. But in cataloging, it's really important, so and that's all I have. Thank you, Shamika. Our sixth panelist is Dina Laney. Hi, everyone. 
Thanks for coming. I see some of my students here. I appreciate that you uh, made the journey down here to listen to what we all have to say. Um, I know it's been interesting hearing everybody's uh, story about how we've arrived at the library. And I wish that when I was 18, graduating from high school, I would have known that this is what I wanted to do. Because this job is, is like my dream job, being a systems librarian. And I took a long route to get here. And I think it's pretty common that people take a while before they realize that they really want to be in the library field. You know, when I was a, a kid, I should have known because one of my favorite things I liked to do was take my 30 books off of my bookshelf and I would make little spine labels and put them in alphabetical order. I know I didn't tell you that, huh? And, but no, it didn't dawn on me. You know, I mean, I loved going to the library as a kid and thankfully my parents, you know, really brought me to the library a lot. And I definitely encourage everybody in my classes, if you have children, take them to the library. Some, some children are never exposed to it and that's a shame because we should all, you know, encourage reading and going to the library. Um, anyway, what happened for me was I was 18 and decided I wanted to, you know, go into some art career or something or business. I don't know, it changed every day. And um, I eventually wound up uh, working in um, retail management. I managed a music store and I was really good at it. I was, I was good at um, customer service and I got bored of it one day and I said, this just is not for me. I want to go into computers. So I went into computers and spent a couple years in computer science and web programming and got a job in programming working for a, um, an online um, class environment basically, which brought me to consider taking online classes myself. So I graduated with my bachelor's degree so that I could go into a master's program in library and information science. Now, I really wasn't focused on the library part. I was focused on the information science part. And had my um, university had like a bachelor's degree program in that, I would have gone and just probably got my bachelor's degree in information science and called it a day. But I really wanted to go into information science and the library side was just sort of a default. And I ended up going to Florida State and they have a different program. We actually had two programs in Florida. One was a traditional librarian program and one was a like a digital librarian program at Florida State. And since I was more interested in that, that's the direction I went. And I took all of my classes online, which was an amazing thing for me. Being that I was a big internet geek, it seemed like the, the way to go. And I learned so much and it was kind of like I tell everybody, when you get to your master's program, if, if you choose to do that or you take your core classes and your bachelor's degree, things, it's like not even going to school anymore because you love it so much, you know, it's so exciting to you and you're proud of what you accomplished rather than taking that math test or writing that English essay one more time and things like that. I mean, everything I did in my master's program, I just, I really enjoyed the whole process, even the classes I didn't like so much which were very, you know, very limited. So I came out, of, I got out of um, my master's program and I really hadn't had library experience. So I was a little nervous about finding a job and should I find a job as a technician, you know, and, and most people want people with experience. I didn't have the opportunity to take like a library technician program. I didn't have hands-on experience. So what I ended up doing was I volunteered at a library for free and uh, and ended up getting a lot of experience that way and since I had had my um, master's degree I was able to work at the reference desk and answer questions and it was a really great learning experience for me. Um, I worked at East LA College and one of the most humbling experiences in my uh, job so far has been this woman was coming back to school after being like ill for 15 years and she really wanted to get a degree so she came in she didn't know how to use a computer she didn't know how to use a mouse you know and it really made me realize that I take a lot of things for granted the things that I can do on the computer and the things that I expect that students should know how to do and, and I applauded her for coming back to school and really going after her dreams and 
you know, that's one of the experiences just being in the library. I mean, you interact with so many different people, you know, from different, you know, from the 18 year old kids to, you know, senior citizens that are coming back to school or just taking classes. And you have the opportunity to teach them so much. You know, um, so many students don't even know how to find a book in the library. They don't know what call numbers are. They don't know how to use a catalog. And so for me, working at a community college, the, you know, it's kind of like we have the, the combination of the public library and an academic library. We're not necessarily always hardcore academics, you know, helping people write their dissertation, things like that. You know, we're helping people at various levels and, and you really have to, you know, take that into consideration when you're interacting with people. You don't know what their skills are. So that's one of the most exciting parts of my job. So what do I do in the library as a systems librarian? My number one job is to manage the system that runs the library, and that system is broken into several different components. It runs circulation, it, it runs cataloging, um, things like that. It runs the catalog for you to search for your, your materials in the library. I also manage the website and um, you know, try and make that as interactive as possible to have as much information on it so that when students and our patrons are using the library at two o'clock in the morning to do their homework, you know, that they can still get help even if we're not staffing the reference desk. Um, the other thing that I do is uh, I work with Ruben to manage the computer labs and you know, kind of oversee all the equipment in the library, which is you know, an interesting um, thing in itself. And then I work at the reference desk. We all work at the reference desk and um, you know, are there to help students when, when they need it. But the other thing that I do, which I kind of consider separate, is, is I teach these classes online. And again, since I had experience being a student online, I really have a, a really strong belief on how I want my classes to be, because I know how frustrating it can be as a student to, to run into certain problems. And I don't want to be that teacher that people are like, hey, you, you know, why is this person teaching online? I'm teaching online because I love teaching online and because I think it's a great way to learn. And I'm kind of shy, and when I took my classes online, it was great for me to be able to communicate with people, you know, with my classmates and work together as, as a group. So I try and foster that in my classes as well. And um, the, the classes I teach, I teach um, the Library Technician uh, 204 class, which is the Introduction to Reference Services class. If you haven't taken it already, you know, and you're interested, I think it's a good class to get started with, learning about the libraries and all the resources we have. We have an enormous amount of online resources available for you to use at your, at your home. And whenever people really realize how much information they have available to them, they're just really you know, surprised that they didn't know this all along. I mean, there's so much available for you in addition to what we offer in the library itself. So I highly recommend if you're considering the library technician program or you're currently in it, keep going and you know, find your place in the library and then maybe you want to continue on with a master's degree and become a librarian and you know, we are always here to, to help you and answer any questions that you might have because we, we're excited about the field and we love it when other people are excited about that too. Okay? Thank you, Dina. And our last panelist is Kim Barclay. Thank you, Deborah. Hi. If you are one of my students, this is my, uh, I'm teaching Library 203, Introduction to Acquisition. Um, I want to tell you a story how I became a librarian. Um, I love, I think it starts from the love of reading, and from the love of reading is uh, loving books. And um, so my background, I will have a different background than um, the most librarian in the sense that my background was in art history and archaeology. And, and after studying, I found out that there are a lot of similarity between a museum and library. Museum uh, acquire artifacts, you know, archaeology, our ancient history, library acquire books. Both are a memory of our human records. 
and I, I found it fascinating to, to learn about this way, way back when, and in my research, during my year of doing um, research in archaeology, I had the opportunity to hold so many ancient books in my hand with trembling because like 15th century book and they let me hold it and I don't know what do I do, what to do, what damage and something like that, you know. So, and so it grew naturally to be a librarian. And when I first um, started, uh, decide to become a librarian, I thought like, uh, I just need to, to, to gather those precious books and I nurture them, I take care of them, <laughs> holding them. I never thought of, I didn't even know of the aspect of services, uh, of teaching involved in being a librarian. And uh, we talk a lot about information, but uh, librarian, we not only gather information, but we gather ancient information. If some of you are library, library three students, you know that we have a chapter about introduction information through the ages and how our, uh, our forefathers way back when had the desire to, to, uh, to carve, to paint ancient features. So very, very, very normal. And we collect little artifacts. It's very normal human desire to collect things you know, to, to keep our memory, to prove that we are here. And, and so I became a librarian thinking that I would to treasure those things. But when I became, I learned a new aspect of the service, as I, as I tell you. And, um, and I found that it's much more rewarding to help people than to, than to take care of precious books or artifacts, however precious they are. You know, because they are just, they are just things. You know, and although I love things, they are things, but you know, palace going down for sure, but to help to empower a human being, be just uh, priceless. And apparently working, uh, I have worked at corporate libraries, uh, which means that I have an engineer, it was an engineering company, having engineer finding information about their field expertise. Um, I work at public library, helping patron, uh, children of different age, and every time to, 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 help them to, find, to help them find something, it's very, really, really rewarding. And, um, but I think my most um, rewarding for me is to work in an academic library, because the public library, you help them, you, basically you find the information and you give them almost in a silver platter. Whereas, as an academic library, you empower them, you teach them to learn, you teach them to help themselves. So basically, instead of giving them fishes, we give them, we love teach them how to fish. And that is much, much more powerful and much, much more rewarding. And so, working in the, in the public library, in the academic library, apparently in California, uh, we, I came into contact, my students come from different countries, different backgrounds. And, and many of my students are returning mother. They are the most powerful student, the returning mother, to go back to school. So you know that I teach acquisition. It's a very, it's again, acquisition is very much like museum. They just gather things, right? So we, in acquisition, uh, either as the uh, librarian, you will decide about book. Uh, but then the technician, we do all the, 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 the field work of working with vendor. Uh, with uh, type order, uh, with uh, processing the order, with so many different aspects. After hearing out uh, my colleague, you know that we have many uh, library technicians who are master, have master degree, they are our equal, and they can do collection development, they can decide which book to buy. Also, so um, uh, many of our cousins, all of us, I think, have, uh, have talked about the aspect of after being a library technician, consider it like a, a first step to, to see if you really like the field. And then I encourage all of my library technician graduate to go on to the, the master degree of library science and um, it gives you more, uh, uh, more window opportunity to, 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 uh, to further help an institution wherever you will to make important decision. Last but not least, Introduction uh, to acquisition class is very, very fun because since we deal with books and vendor, it takes a certain of, um, 
um, communication skill, you know, to work with vendors. Sometimes you have to be very patient. Vendors, sometimes they take long to answer your question. We request a book, we send a, 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 a list of order, and we didn't come back to you right away. Or they didn't answer you yes or no. Or do we have those in the program? But if you know, you had the opportunity also to visit the book fair. You know, our latest book fair is in, in, uh, in this April in California. We are a festival book. So there's a lot of opportunity to, uh, to meet author, uh, to meet different vendors. So it's a very, I think it's a very fun part of the library technician aspect of work. So, uh, so that's all I had to say. And now we are into the um, question and answer. And this is your opportunity to ask any question you want. And we will try to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give all of our panelists a round of applause. Okay, um, we're a little ahead of schedule, but we will go right into the question and answer session. Um, if you would like to ask a question to a particular panelist or to anyone who would like to answer, uh, we have a mic standing microphone set up right behind you. So if you could please stand up and line up so that we can answer your questions um, in the order that you get to the microphone. It's right behind you. <laughs> Patricia um, Trujillo, I'm taking all five library classes this semester. I actually came back to school in January, so I'm a little overwhelmed. Um, I know I have a few more uh, classes to go. Uh, my plan is to hopefully one day work at a, uh, as a librarian in an academic uh, library. Um, I guess I wanted to know, is, is, could I actually work with a certificate that I will be earning, or is it just better for me to just wait and um, get my master's? Or is there a, a specific field I should just uh, study more, like say uh, uh, literature and children's, or you know, uh, do you have any advice for this? Yes, it's it's it's. Well, I think you. You're on the right track. I would say that if you get your certificate program done, the, your best option would be to, to immediately see if you can work as a library technician. Yeah. Because at work experience, you have no idea. I mean, we have seen it in other fields as well. Like, so for instance, when I finished my PhD and I thought that I could be a fantastic teacher, oh, yeah. and lo and behold, when I went to the class and started to teach, I found out that uh, teaching skills are vastly different from just getting the degree. So that field experience, get your feet wet by working for a couple of years. While you're working, you could begin your master's program. And don't forget that uh, two units from the library technician program, Delhi can correct me because she's more in tune with what's happening in the field now, you can transfer that towards your master's degree. And, um, and that's how Ruben did it and a lot of other people. And you'll be surprised to know that a um, number of our library uh, technicians that we have, they have been working for us and uh, it's, it's, it's a boon and a curse because any person who works with Delhi in cataloging, we haven't been able to keep that person for more than two years because they go on to do their masters and end up getting a better job. <laughs> and so um, the upward mobility is there a lot. Yeah. One of the things in terms of specialization that you're talking about, the library technician program in itself covers a wide spectrum. That, And then once you start your master's program, you can see for yourself where is your niche, okay, where is your strength. One of the things I would recommend is that for all the new people, 
two areas, no matter what your passion is, you have to be very strong in. One is, if you have the bilingual capacity, that's going to take you, you'll be head and shoulders above everybody. If you know Spanish, if you know Chinese uh, language, Mandarin, or if you know Arabic, it's, it's fantastic. And don't think that after you finish your library program, you are necessarily limited to academic or corporate or public library. With this sort of a degree that you have in the information age, the federal government is just hankering for people with that kind of a background. For instance, you could work in the foreign service if you are posted in Tokyo or something like that, and um, you need to get background information about the country, about uh, uh, the terrorist attacks and things of that sort then who is better qualified to gather all that information and provide to the right sources? CIA, Foreign Service, uh, uh, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, Forestry, if you're one of the eco person interested in the environment, then um, forestry, museums, there are plenty of jobs outside the academic field as well. I didn't know that, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I'd like to comment too. Okay. <laughs> um, as someone who was who got their master's degree and didn't have the library experience to, behind that, um, I definitely had to compete with this with the students who had been working in the libraries for many years because it's very common that if you do get your master's degree, you know where you are working in this program that people are taking the program you know to get further into their career. So I definitely recommend you know like try and think about what might be interesting to you because if you go into a job you know there's a good chance that they might have opportunities there for you once you get your degree and you know like if, if your interest is in an academic library try and get a job in an academic library if your interest is in you know the public library or specialized library try and, and target those areas and the other thing that's interesting to know is that when people get their their um, job in a library, a lot of them stay there for a very long time because they love it. So a lot of people are filling jobs for people that have been retired and things like that. So, you know, keep keep looking. You know, some people wonder if it's easy to find a job. You know, it, it, it might take you a while to find a job, but as long as you're, you know, still continuing in, in your studies and just, you know, try and keep open, um, you know, get on the listservs and find the websites that offer the jobs for the libraries and kind of keep applying to, you know, don't give up. Yeah. Okay. Nice. My, ad, my one advice too is also if you could volunteer, you know, because that's what I came up because as, as I said prior to coming to Long Beach, I, I really work in the public library and then university library. I work in the community college and I also work in a uh, spatial library. And that's how I came, got, got up here in Long Beach City. I decided to really like to work in a community college library with all of the, my experience working on different types of libraries. I said that, okay, I really like to really work in a community college library. So it's, at least you're gonna have a background, more information if you really want to be a public, if you want, really like to work in a public library, special library, university library, or a community college library. So that is one of the best advice that I'd like to give to, to some of you. Try to feel, you know, uh, the environment, if you really, what type of libraries do you like to work with? Okay, well, thank you. Hi, my name's Ann Campos. I'm currently in Kim's class and Dina's class, and I'm planning to take all the classes for this certification. Thank you to all the panel members for coming out and talking today. It's much appreciated. Um, the question I want to ask is for Shamika, because you've worked in academic library, public library, but also school library. Could you talk a little more about that, compare and contrast your experiences in all of those libraries? Um, well, the public library, I mostly just worked the circulation desk, so it was, um, it was pretty busy, you know, a lot of hustle and bustle, but I didn't get to do as much um, inputting of anything into the computer 
or anything like that. Mostly I was just checking in and checking out. So I was really restricted to the circulation desk. Um, at the high school and the elementary school, however, there you're kind of a one-man show. So you're the circulation person, you're the cataloging person, you're the reference person, you're everyone all in one person because they really don't hire more than one person per site. I was fortunate at the site I was at that there was um, uh, what they call a teacher librarian. So she was actually a, uh, a certified teacher, but she had like a few courses in li some librarian classes or whatever and to get a second um, certificate, not even a master's degree, just a certificate. And with there, um, I guess the difference between there and here is, like I said, it was one more show. Here, I do less physical work. There, I was constantly unpacking and packing boxes and moving pallets, and I did a lot, of, a lot of physical work. And here, I really get to focus on the cataloging aspect. I really get to be more meticulous. Whereas the high school, we have to, we get a shipment today, and it has to be out tomorrow, so we're just hit it and miss it, and sometimes the information isn't correct. It can be all kinds of things that go wrong and you have to fix it later. But um, basically that's just the biggest difference though. Here, everyone has their certain areas so you get to be more intense and, and more, uh, you get to pay more attention to your specific area of expertise. Thank also, you. Uh, let me add also, because I work, of course, by default in cataloging also, that uh, uh, one thing good about working in this college and mainly in other community colleges is that you get to catalog a variety of formats. You get to catalog books, you get to catalog periodicals, you name it, you get to catalog it. But if you work like for a big university, you can catalog maybe just books, or just periodicals, or just, you know, certain specific uh, items. You don't get to have that overall cataloging experience. Thank you. Hello, my name is Robin Horat. Uh, Ms. Barclay is my instructor. Um, I work at the headquarters LA County Public Library. Um, at the bottom, I'm an intermediate clerk typist, so I put the spines, the labels, the class codes. Um, my, my interest is cataloging. Um, I want to specialize in that field. Are there any other type of courses beside this that I need to specialize in to um, actually move into that position. Actually, actually as legal, um, not legal, but uh, library assistant. I don't know if I answered that. OK. okay. Uh, have you taken my course yet? No, not yet. <laughs> OK. Uh, let me describe my course, OK, so that uh -huh. nobody here, I, I'm sure that there are some of you that are taking my class. Mm -hmm. Once you enroll in my course, mm -hmm. you're actually working in okay. the library. Okay. It's, that, it's that practical. Okay. I know I get students for the first week I look at it as a pregnancy trend, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> the first week or second week is like, you know how some, a woman gets pregnant and they're, oh, they're so excited about yeah. the class and everybody's, you know, cheerleading at that time. Yeah. By the time you get to the middle of, middle of the semester, it's like, where is that guy? I want to kill him now. <laughs> so you're talking about me then. Where is she? I want to kill her now. Because then you're learning about ACL2, you're learning about Mark, you're learning about things that you don't even want to learn about. But okay. That are very, very critical. Uh -huh. um, my class is very, it's very, very practical. I think that if you take the class, you go into any, this is, a, I mean, I'm not boasting here. You go into any master's program, you will do excellent. Okay. okay? Because I've taught you every single thing that you need to know. Okay. Because I will make you touch the books, touch the I, tools that we use. You will actually search OCLC. Mm -hmm. This is the only class in this world, at this level, where students have access to OCLC. Okay. Otherwise, you have access to that when you go into uh, graduate school. Okay. So I make you search OCLC. It is also the only class in the world at the community college level where students have access to the Library of Congress database. Okay. You search it, that's the subscribed one, not the, the Library of Congress online catalog. Okay. So you will have to search that so you will know it's called the classification web that has the Library of Congress call numbers, and that has the Dewey call numbers and the subject headings and all that. You get to look at that. So when you're taking the other classes, mm -hmm. you're learning about the subject headings, the LCSH. You're opening it up to look at things in alphabetical order. In my class, you actually learn how to assign those headings. Okay. And where in the world do people get all those headings? Okay? okay. So it's very practical. I don't mind at any time when students come to want to come see me or sit down with me, that's fine. I have, we have a lot of new books now. Mm -hmm. And I've also asked my students, come in, search OCLC, mm -hmm. 
touch the books, take them, go search OCLC, find the books, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a supervisor that always told me, you cannot kill the book. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just yeah. open up. Okay. And don't let books drive you crazy, okay? If you can't figure out, find the record or you can't figure it out, that's fine. Do the next one, you okay. know. So, um, make sure if you're interested in cataloging that you try to get a lot of practical experience. A okay. whole lot of practical experience. Okay. So that if somebody asks you what is AACR2, you know what it is. Right. If somebody asks you about Mark, you know what it is. Okay. Okay. There are, co there are other colleges that offer the library technician program, that offer cataloging. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very, very easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, extremely easy. You just learn how to catalog maybe a book or something like that. Okay. Or maybe not. not. But if you meet somebody like me in the job area, then you'll be completely lost when I ask you just one question. I, I'll, you won't be able to answer it. But if you take my class anywhere you go and they ask you any question, you'll be able to answer that question. Okay. Will there be, like, um, in your course, like, any hands-on training? Besides the, the online, will we be able to, um, I guess, uh, go in and get the feel of it, you know, cataloging, ordering, or however that works, you know? Like I said, you enrolled in my class. I think some of you enrolled in my class. From day one, you're cataloging, period. Okay. Okay. You're, you're not taking the class, you are cataloging. Okay. <laughs> I have students here that I will tell you that. Okay. They yell at me, that's fine. I just, I don't respond to that. Okay. You can be mad. Some people ask me, do we have to know all this? I said, no, I don't, I don't have to know. You don't have to use all this I want. I mean, you, if you know where to find, what I teach you is where do you find what you, you need? Because you don't have your supervisor all the time telling you, okay, go look in ACR. Okay. Or, no, you have to know where what ACR does. Okay. So you will touch it. I have about 100 books on reserve. You're okay. going to touch all of them. Okay. You don't have to read all of them, but okay. at least I want you to look at them and know that they exist, right? Okay. So you will be cataloging. You actually be working from the first day. Okay. All right. that's, that's, the, that's the way I was fortunate that I learned like, like that, okay. you know, and people that train me are trainers. They train people, they train librarians at, at like ALA, American Library Association. They train librarians at national and international level. So they actually, I have that little edge over a lot of catalogers. Okay. Okay. So you will get to work. <laughs> okay. You'll get all the experience you need. Okay. And just one more thing. I know, Miss uh, Simpson, you mentioned that you have workshops, right? that I attend workshops. You attend? Mm -hmm. Is it limited to just your staff or, or can like some of the students attend no, the workshop? No, as long as you, well basically they're just meant for people, paraprofessionals or professionals, mm -hmm. as long as you're in the library field mm -hmm. and you just, you know, pay, basically pay your membership fee and they send you all these wonderful workshops that you can attend. Mm -hmm. And because of that, actually Delhi's the one who introduced me to um, the technical processing uh, group. And that's okay. where I've done a lot of workshops through them. And they do keep you abreast of the new trends and new standards. So it's really interesting to see because, you know, like for me, for example, you can take, they can just send you a list of um, workshops and you choose, you know, which workshops you would like to attend. Okay. I'm not the best at serials cataloging, so I tend to take more of the serials cataloging because I want to be better at what I do. So okay. that means if I have to be more multifaceted, then that's what I need to do to stay abreast in my field. Okay. And there's one more thing. I work closely with Shamika and she can tell you this better than I can. Mm -hmm. She just can't come to me and say, Delhi, I cannot find this record for this book. No. Mm -hmm. She has to show me that she has tried to look in OCLC, right. Library of Congress, here, there, there, before I will live. Otherwise, I will tell her, go back and look here. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. She can say, oh, Delhi, this call number is not correct. No. Well, which one is correct? Yes. So I, have, I work with somebody that taught me how to work like that. You don't mm -hmm. come to somebody with a problem. You come with a solution. Exactly. Right? You come with a, you know, that's why we don't call it problem. We call it challenge. Right. Okay, that's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's it. Thank you for your uh, information. Okay. Hello. Um, this uh, question is for the entire panel. And um, basically, I'm going to be transferring to a university next year out of state. And my plan is to um, work in the library of the university so I'll have an income. And I have already completed one of the courses um, to get the certificate, but I won't be able to complete all of them. Um, 
But my question is, um, to work in a, those of you who know about working in a university library, um, what, do you know any of the uh, prerequisites besides this certificate um, for an entry level position? To get a job in the in a university library? Yes. Um, if you have some kind of experience, it helps. But if you don't, there are areas where, as a student, you can be trained. You know, depending on what area it is. You know, like when I started first, I experienced my cataloging. You know, I didn't know anything about cataloging. Didn't have any clue what cataloging meant. But slowly, they eased me into what it it is. Um. So it depends on who you'll be working with and what area of library, the library that you know. And if you're a very fast learner and you show attention to details, then that helps you, especially like in cataloging. You know, and if you're a people person, of course that helps you a, a lot with you know, the uh, public area. So what I will say is you apply, look at the job description or the job areas and see which one you like. And also maybe if you want a little bit of experience, do some volunteering, public library, anywhere. You can say that you volunteered here and you know what it means to check out a book, a bedroom. My suggestion would be um, definitely familiarize yourself with the resources that the university has. Um, familiarize yourself with the call number system. Usually um, academic libraries use Library Congress classification. So kind of have a general idea what the you know broad categories are for that, and you know try and learn as much about that particular library and research in that library as you can, so that when you go to interview for the job, you you know have proven that you you know have done your research basically on on what it means to work there. Uh, the other thing that I could suggest, if you are really planning to work on the public areas. Make sure you are the very patient person, okay? Because, and, uh, or else, you know, there are sometimes, because we are really the first one that the students are approached, sometimes if they are prostrated, they will gonna yell at you, they will gonna scream at you, they will gonna tell you uh, things that you will just, huh? And then, so you will have to be patient with them. And, you know, be understanding, you know, that they sometimes they go through with assignments that they cannot find anywhere. So you have to be very, very totally be patient and kind, you know, and always even they are yelling at you or anything, just make sure you have a, still a smile, you know, face and just keep asking, okay, I do understand everything. So that's the only thing that I keep asking people and I'm happy that the one that I have from here at Long Beach, the library staff at the circulation desk, they are really very, very patient and manage to handle all those problems that come on their way, okay? Yeah, I want to also add that um, when they are talking about resource of academic library, I want to emphasize the difference in between a community college, a library, and a four years college. The resources are very, very different. So depending in um, what institution to learn to know the resource of the particular library is very, very important. Secondly, um, the student, especially the, the first year student, what we call the freshman. Many high school in the United States have no librarian or no li um, library. They are not familiar with doing research. So the first, the first year student can be completely lost, and I, I found out that according to survey, there are no difference between first year student at community college or first year student at four, four year university. They're exactly the same. Nowadays, especially they're all about their, their method of searching or using library, even they're so familiar with uh, the internet, the technology, everything very fast, very quick. And they didn't, they're not used to using print resource, uh, database, and, and so on and so forth. So keep in mind of that. And like um, Rina and Nita say, you have to be very patient, very patient with your first year students. Uh, to add to what uh, Kim has said, familiarize yourself with the library because you're dealing with smaller number of databases here. But when you go to university, you're going to have more databases. 
And then you also have the career and job services. You have a wonderful resource and a mentor here. The first thing you need to do is to make sure that you have a resume that speaks to the job, okay? And have, you should need to have a fire in your belly and a drive, and it's all about marketing yourself. Even if the job is not there at the university level, you said you're going to Cal State Fullerton? No, I'm going out of state. Okay. Um, but I'm sure to a private, then I just depends on what I, where I get accepted. So wherever you go, if it's a university, they're bound to have a huge library, um, perhaps even more than one library. So the, I would say that get your resume very well done. Practice a little bit about interviewing techniques and dress code and things of that sort. Look people in the eye. I mean, I came from a different culture where we don't look people in the eye. It took me a long time to get over that. So um, get all that and the ducks in order. And then I'll just go to the director, just have an appointment and say, hey, look, I could contribute in these ways for the goodness of the library. And one of the things that Kim has been pointing out, it, it makes no difference whether you're at a community college or at a university. The first year students really lack these skills and the resources to find information. And who better to teach them? You would be a vehicle, you would be a conduit for them because you would be talking to peers. The student prefers getting information from another student who is knowledgeable rather than going to a reference library and they feel intimidated. So, simple fact, just mention all this at the interview and say, hey, I could contribute. And I think once you have a foot in, sky's the limit. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, one more question, sorry. Uh, does this certification program offer or has there been any discussion of offering a type of three-unit independent study where it's like an internship, where that student earns credit for doing some type of internship at the library here at the college? Uh, the, the current curriculum guide, we do not have such a course, but um, we're thinking of uh, creating a course, um, you call it independent study, we could call it like um, work, work experience. And we look into that, we will look into that. If there are enough demand or if there are enough um, question, we're thinking of, but we did talk among ourselves about that. Thank you. Uh, what I do again in my cataloging class is because I realize there's no internship, I actually do some, what I'm doing is actually like internship also because you're cataloging, you're working actually for, with me as we go from one semester, beginning of the semester to the end. You can come and see me, you can do my worksheets, I have a lot of worksheets, worksheets that will show you what you'll be doing actually when you are on the job. So that's one way I, I try to encourage, you know, have people gain experience. I also offer credits, extra credits for people that take the time to come and see me because I felt that was one way of encouraging students to actually come in and to the library to actually work and, you know, they, they don't have to. You don't have to come and see me, you know. But that's one way of me offering practical experience until we establish the internship at this level. We do have internship experience or internship opportunities for people and students in masters at masters level, but not for the library tech program yet. Any question? Are there any more questions for the panelists? For the full semester, uh, tentatively, depending on the budget, but right now we have on the schedule uh, Library 3, uh, Library 203 Acquisition, and Library 202 uh, Access Services. So they are different than this semester. This is where we have cataloging and reference services, so we try to rotate. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. And um, if you have any question, um, in the back of the brochure, you can email me or call me and I will confirm the section number, the course to you. Any other questions? Okay, I thank you all for coming today and uh, please uh, would you fill out the evaluation form. Um, you can turn it in at the check-in desk. We also still have some refreshments left, so please uh, help yourself to that. I would like to finish it off. <laughs> um, and if you have any other questions that you think of later, um, all of the panelists work at either the library at this campus or at PCC, so um, feel free to contact them. Or just, e just email me, and depending, I can forward uh, your email to my colleague, you know, depending if you have cataloging question or circulation question. Thank you very much for attending, and have a great day. Thank you.